Hello, friends. Welcome to season one, episode one of A Sound Conversation, a monthly podcast where we get to chat with some wonderful people about life, music, and the business of both. I am your host, Papa Versa. And before we move on, a little disclaimer I have a stutter or stammer. So, those watching or listening, if there's a long pause or interruption in my speech, it's not you or your Wi Fi, it's me. <laughs> uh, but that aside, it is such an honor to have today's guest on my show. He needs no introduction, but he deserves one anyway. Uh, he's a record producer, rapper, singer, songwriter, <laughs> businessman, widely known as the founder of Ghana's legendary hip hop group, The Skillions, and eventually the CEO of Skillions Records and Skillions Global Now. Our guest has a deep and impactful uh, catalog spanning. Over a decade, he's also produced for virtually everyone in the Ghanaian music industry and beyond, from Sarkodia to Manifest, Efia to Adina, Wyclef, Sway, the list is endless. He's one of my personal and musical heroes, and I'm honored to have him as my first guest ever on this podcast. Cool. Friends, help me welcome the one and only Jaso to the show. Jaso, welcome. Welcome to the show. Bro. What's an intro? Charlie, I'll give Listen, you man, I think I think you you definitely need to be on some sort of radio or podcast. Well, the podcast thing is definitely like you know what like what's that's the like, way it's bro. Like the thing now, yeah. Charlie J. So me, I've used so many words to to describe mm-hmm. you, right? How do you describe yourself in a few words or as many words as you well, want? <laughs> well, I think I think you know me well enough. Like Charlie, look, me, I just be your average guy with like a gift or passion to create and to share my gift with the world, you know? And I always say that I just happen to be good at this thing that they do. <laughs> like I just happen to be good at it. I never ever received any like proper training, you know, it was just right. really raw and like Charlie, I just decided to pursue on. And along the way, I was just fortunate to bump into some very, um, important people, you yeah. know, people I consider mentors who shaped and shifted my, you know, my craft. Yeah. And fast forward, Charlie, this is me, J. So. J. Charlie, your, your average guy. That's what's up. That's what's up. Far from average, but okay. You know, that's one average. of the things that I appreciate about you is that he, that's humility and like <clears throat> modesty and everything. So it's, it's, it's part of why I find you very inspiring. So, um, so Jay, like what is keeping you busy these days, right? Um, either uh, personally and professionally. Boy, I'll say Ezra. <laughs> Ezra. So how old is Ezra? Ezra, <laughs> Ezra turns to next month, actually. Wow. Sorry, actually, um, no, not, no, what, what am I saying? Uh, in May, we're May. in February, so in May. Okay. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> to answer your question, I would say first and foremost, family. Yeah. Um, but it's busy in a good way. Good. Um, you know, for me, I, I'm, I'm, I would say I'm really fortunate, blessed to be able to spend, um, you know, as much time that I need to spend yeah. with my family because That's I'm in great. control of my stuff. Yeah, your so, time. Exactly. So spending time with my family is like what's keeping me busy most of the time. And then um, the rest I would say would be work. Um, that is either music, yeah. using stuff or some other ventures some other things that you know i double in that we don't miss, i mean we can get into a few of them but yeah, yeah like that's really what's keeping me busy right now so so jay like do you consider yourself more of an artist or an entrepreneur is there a difference what are your thoughts on that it's interesting i mean at this point in my life i think i i would I would say I'm more of an entrepreneur. I've always been, but now I think I am pursuing more of um, my um, other businesses outside the music business. Sure. You know, so sure. that is now. But if I should take everything, like, you know, my entire career um, since I started music or actively started doing music in 2001, I would say, of course, I'm first and foremost a record producer. Yep. And then an artist. Okay. And then the rest. 
songwriter, basketball player. Right. Yeah, all those basket, things. Yeah. <laughs> <They're> just, like, <laughs> yeah. So I think uh, for now, right now, where I sit, um, I would say that um, I'm more of an entrepreneur, like just exploring different things, okay. you know, within the music and outside the music as well. So of, of all of those things that you're up to, besides Ezra, what keeps you up at night? Like what's, what's like something that you, okay, this is, this is the thing that's keeping me up at night. Um, I think for me, it's just the desire to, you know, make it and be present, um, both in my family's, like their lives. And, um, also knowing that there are lots of people out there who look up to me and making sure that I'm always ten toes, always trying to figure out the next move, making sure that the businesses are running and, yeah. you know, always make sure that my family is in a good place, yeah. you know, yeah. um, because me, I'm family oriented. So I'm always thinking about my family and just making sure that they are okay. Right. You know, it keeps me motivated. It keeps like I, ha- I have a reason, and sure. it, it helps me find purpose. Yeah. Um. Otherwise, then, what am I doing? Like, if I'm trying to make it or trying to make money or I want my business to flourish, why am I doing it? I'm not doing it for right. myself. Right. You know, like now I think legacy. I think like generational wealth building and stuff like that is how I think now. So, I'm always trying to make sure that I'm making the right moves. Um, for my family, for my children, and then my children's children. You know? So that's right. that's really it. That is what keeps me up at night. That's great. Um, I mean, it it sounds like you have a a destination in mind, and you're like reverse engineering your steps mm-hmm. in that direction. If you had those last twenty four hours of, I mean, all of us will die. Surprise. Mm -hmm. Uh, no spoiler alert there so if you had those last like 24 hours right to live how would you spend that and i have a sense of what that that answer is but like just Mm. well your guess is right papa it's just family yeah that's it like um just making sure that uh my family my wife uh, my kids, they have access to everything that I own. <laughs> you know, all the all the long, long passwords and all the everything. You know, just making yeah. sure that um, when I'm away, yeah, they are gonna be okay. Yeah, you know, and also, I think one thing I'll definitely do is to reach out to um, people who have made um, an impact in my life, one way or the other, and um, let them know how much I appreciate them. Mm. Um, how much I love them and um, um, if there are any small small beefs here and there with some people so I'm sure I will reach out and let them know that hey it's all love <laughs> right, reconciliation yeah. okay yeah okay. Um, yeah and then making sure that whatever we've created um, it lives on yeah you know yeah. and it will continue to be present on the internet and people can consume it and know um what Jason was about and what right. he stood for. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. It's actually really a very interesting thing, you know. Um if you had 24 hours, literally like what are you gonna do? Yeah. Like is 24 hours, hours even gonna be enough? Like, you know what I mean? <clears throat> is 24 hours gonna be enough for you to it's just crazy, which is why I mean it's important that even as you're alive, as you still draw breath, as you still, you know, um this the, the privilege that we have to say that we are alive. Yeah, you have to make sure that you you um you live like you have just twenty four hours to live. Hashtag you know? copy so, DM. Hashtag yeah, copy DM. DM. So yeah, you mentioned how you just like follow the passion, and there wasn't really any training, but you just you stuck a she and you met some some mm-hmm. important people <laughs> along the way and everything, yeah. and, and now you're here. So yeah. I guess yeah. aside from the natural talent and your passion. What is a trait of yours that you feel has helped you be successful in the music business, but even just in, in business as a whole and in, in, in your life so far? Yeah. I think that would be 
sounds really cliche now that I think about it, but um, I am driven by, you know, again, it depends on what the business is. So I'll, let, let me just break it down. With the music, for instance, right, when I started, um, it was just, like I said, this passion that I had. I thought, okay, you know, I'm, I'm good at this. I remember <laughs> the first time I wrote down a rap verse, it was to Busta Rhymes, Woo Ah, from back in the days. You know when I step up in the place, you know I step, correct? Ooh, I wow, got wow. you all in check, yes. Yep. So it's one of the first rap verses I wrote. And um, I went back, uh, I was in, I think I was in junior high school then. And then I'll, I'll go back to school and then I'll rap it to my friends and it'll just be giving me fun. So I'm like, this is interesting. Like, maybe I can do this. Yeah. So I just started writing my own stuff. You know, I'll do a lot of jacking i'll steal a lot of lines from my favorite rappers and i'll put something together and i'm gonna come like, okay this is interesting mind you at the time i wasn't thinking money i just thought wow this is something interesting like the fact yeah. that you can just write something and go recite to people and they're just going crazy yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was like well like, what's, what is going on here so yeah so that's how it started for me and um once i started that then i started studying and I'm like, okay, you know what? This is how I can improve what I'm doing, mm-hmm. you know? So I start researching. I always want to, like, improve on, like, on whatever it is that I know. That's right. the thing with me. Once I right. start something, I want to improve on it. So then I start doing more researching. So I'm like, okay, so if I write it this way and I do this, it, it can sound this way. Cool, 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 cool. Then, into beats. Because I'll beatbox my stuff. Like, sure. I'll just beatbox... You know, I was a decent beatboxer back in the days, decent. And I'm like, okay, how can I turn this beatbox into like an actual instrumental? Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I started looking around. Like, okay, there's this studio in Tema called, I think it was called I3 Studios. Mm. So I went there and I met this guy. He had this Macintosh computer and Charlie, some weird looking stuff. So I'll beatbox the stuff for him and then he play it. And the whole time, I'm just sitting down looking at him like, wow, this is, this is mind-blowing stuff. Like, yeah, I just have this idea in my head. I'm beatboxing it and yeah. it's like, I'm seeing this thing materialize. Like, it's yeah. coming to life. Right. So I start asking him questions. Like, you know, like a lot of producers, they don't want to give away their gems, like their secrets. They don't want to share it. Yeah. So I'm just looking around, looking at the gadgets, stuff. Okay, cool. And I go home and I start doing my research. You know, so to sum it up, right, I think it's my, the ability to, you know, um, identify something or have an interest in something. Right. And then once I get into it, I'm able to just, you know, adapt or learn the thing quickly and then improve on it. And just the willingness to like research and yeah. like develop and build that thing and to make it mine and just, that's for me, right? That's why I find a passion first of all. Right. Right. So when people send me stuff and I'm, for instance, when you send me your stuff and I'm mixing it, right, I'm enjoying the new stuff I'm hearing. Like, wow, this is refreshing, you know? Yeah. And how can I mix this? How can I do this? How can I do this to make it better, right? Yeah. So that's how I've always approached my music, mm. you know? It's all, all I need is like, just to spark anything that can just spark this interest in me. Yeah. And when I get into it, I just keep it going, mm. keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. And now with the internet, Papa. Charlie, it's over. The information is out there. Out there. Tutorials, they're out there for free. So once I pick up something, like I said, and I know I sound like a broken record, but once I pick up the thing, you know, I'm able to like push and just develop on it and find a way to like make it my own, yeah. you know, and that's how it's always been with me, like in music. Um, the business side came later because obviously sure. once you're doing the music and People are coming to you to pay you for beats and you have to start learning the business. Yep. Yep. So that's how it started for me. And that's one key thing, you know, about me, which is, uh, I guess, going to answer your question, which is that um, my ability to, um, you know, adapt and just develop um, this or just to create this thing and just, you know, improve on it. I've yeah. always believed that if I set my mind to anything, I'll be able to do it and I can excel at it Yeah, because I'm a smart guy. Right. I just need that interest and I need to push 
and I can make it happen. Um, that's how I also got into um, the video production stuff. Because for me, it's always been, how can I improve on this? I started with music. Yeah. Then I started making beats because I know the game producers make them do my beats. Right. So me now for start, make my beats. You figure it out. Okay, now, okay, now it's me. I have all these artists that I'm working with. Charlie had to get quotes from video directors, like crazy money. I'm like, okay, how can I, you know, because guess what? When you call the directors, the first question they'll ask you is, do you have any idea? Do you have any concept? Right. And usually, Papa, I will come with the whole storyline, like how I want this done, how, and the, and usually the directors, most directors I've worked with, they'll be like, ah, how did they come up with all these things? You know, I'm just, I'm a creative person. Yeah. You know, I think, so I think from the, from the beginning of the, um, whatever the audio, the music that we're creating to like the visuals, I'm thinking right. 360. Right. So, that's it. It's always been like a bump after the other audio, you know, um, making my music to like get into the videos and now get into the executive side, you know, yeah. like the music business side and label services and it's just publishing. And yeah. so yeah. if you notice, it's just yep. growing, 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 growing. Eventually, and that is where we are really trying to reach is, is that VC status, like where we're able to, you know, look at... Um, just, just to give opportunities um, to, you know, young creatives who have something brilliant right. Right. that we can we can uh, support. Yeah, you know, so yeah. that is that is really. I know it's a long answer, Bro. but yeah, Tally, it's very difficult for me to just pick one thing and say, okay, this thing, yeah. you know. But based on the explanation I've given, right, it's just it just tells you that it's so many different things. Yeah. You have to be disciplined. You have to be focused. You have to uh, have that willingness to want to learn and grow. Right. You know, it requires right. a lot of humility. It requires so many things. Because this journey, mm -hmm. I've had to be different, different. I've had to, like, practice different traits right. in order to get to this point. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's, 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 it's a lot. It's so, a lot. It's a lot so, of different traits. So I'm hearing, I'm hearing like three main ones that are come to the surface for me. Number one is curiosity, like a deep curiosity. So like you, mm -hmm. you're interested in something and then you're, you're in. And then I'm also, you know, uh, hearing a commitment. I mean, cause I know people who are curious, but they can be, be distracted. So I'm hearing like, mm -hmm. you know, like, like a deep curiosity and a commitment mm -hmm. to go all the way. Actually develop, yeah, to yeah, develop whatever right. curiosity it is, right. yeah. And then number three, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing like adaptability, just like mm -hmm. being able to wear different hats and just adjust as you need to um, in order to be committed to that thing that you're mm -hmm. looking at. So that's what I'm hearing. And also, Jay, long at, like the reason I love the podcast space is because it, it's long form like you like right i'm not worried about a producer in my ear you know or like the <laughs> that we have to sell or the next right <laughs> next format or whatever like so right this is exactly the, the place where i hope you and other artists can just come and just right give long answers and that's great so yeah um Chale, so so what are some of the businesses now that you're you're up to i mean you've hinted at some video stuff and you know what what are those businesses like me? Like I know what they are, but I, you know, our right. listeners probably don't. So, uh, do you mind sharing? You know, just like some of what you're up to. Okay, so um, first and foremost, I'll say currently it's uh, Skillions Global. Well, it's the new Skillions Records. Let me put it that way. Yeah. Um, it's not just an indie label anymore. Um, it's it's actually you know a media, should I say a media group? Right. So the indie label is under Skillions Global and under the same umbrella, you know, we do the music production stuff, the um, audio engineering services, uh, video production stuff, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's actually a company that is based in the UK, you know, and we also offer label services. So basically what we're trying to do is um, to have 
a one-stop shop for creatives. Um, so if you need what uh, graphic designing done, if you need um, a website done, if you need your song mixed or mastered, if you need a the whole beat, thing, the whole thing, we're able to provide those services. And um, back home in Ghana, I have Fair Channel Direct, which is also a similar setup except that is more of, um, it's an ad agency and a production company. And um, we have Six Mudu Media under Fair Channel Direct. And Skidoz Records used to be under Fair Channel, you know. So under Fair Channel, we have our recording studio, which is in Tema, Mm -hmm. and then the the video production suite, Six Mudu Media, which is also in Tema. So in Ghana... It's doing all those things, production right. company. Yeah, so audiovisual production company, that's their right. channel direct. And then Skillions Global is now doing more of the um, the music, you know, label services, etc. Sure. Et so if any production work needs to be done, like for instance, if we need to edit a video, we simply send it over to their channel to get mm-hmm. it done. So that is, you know, how I'm okay. running things right now with... Um, yeah, so Skillers Global here in the UK and then Third Channel Direct mm. in Ghana. Yeah. And then um, also there are, you know, some other things that I am, one of them that, you know, it's still in the pipeline. It's not it's not out yet. So I wouldn't reveal too much, but um, all I'll say is, you know, it's a platform. It's an e-learning platform. Um, it will be launched very, very, very soon. Okay. Um, so those who follow me when the time is <laughs> when the time is up, I will um I will definitely publish it and everyone will see it. Yeah. All right. I think for now, yeah, that's it. And then obviously Tune Shelf. Uh, that's another project I would love to talk about. But again, it's under development. Okay. So uh, again, when the time is right, uh, I'll definitely put it out there and everyone will know. So yeah. So the next time I have you on the show. I'm, I have to add a uh, tech mogul to, to my long list of, uh, wow. of things on there. So I'm, I'm looking yes. forward to that. Yes. Yes. You know, we've always, we've, we've always doubled in it. Um, yeah. Now it's I, like I said, you know, at, at this point in my life, I'm trying to do projects that would be beneficial to the industry. Right. Um, and then the young creatives. Yeah. Because I have, I have, you know, been on the terrain and that's, I have faced, you know, the challenges and I see the challenges that exist in especially Africa or Ghana specifically yeah. um, in the music space and the things that we lack. So um, I am trying to, um, you know, create opportunities or infrastructure or whatever systems that we lack, mm-hmm. you know, um, yeah. those, those are the things that I'm looking, looking into just so that the creatives back home or the creatives in Ghana, Africa can, um, you know, can be able to properly monetize right. um, whatever they create. Yep. You know? So that's yeah. been, a, that's, that's really what, um, that's the space I'm in right now. Okay. So, I mean, that that actually leads to the next question that I want to ask, which is you've been in the in the industry for a long time and um, it's really grown and evolved in many ways, but I'm sure in other ways it hasn't. Like if you could change anything about the music industry, both like either local or international, um, what would it be? I mean, I grew up in the in the Ghana, you know, mm-hmm. the Guardian music industry. Um, I grew up in that space, so that would be the focus for me. Yeah. Um, in other places, they are uh, fortunate to have, you know, the basic things that you know any creative would need in order to flourish. Yeah. Um, in Ghana. If we are able to put these basic, you know, things in place, I'll give you a few examples. Um, music login is for me one of like the 
fundamental things or the most basic things that any industry um, requires or needs to be able to, you know, flourish. What's music logging? Uh, so when music is 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 like, I mean, now you have the um, the DSPs that log music, regardless. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's something. It's part of the system, so you are able to track um, your your um, the usage mm-hmm. of the content you put out. Mm-hmm. So, from your listeners, their gender, you know, their location, etc. Right, you know, all these different yeah, the demographics, all these different you know analytics that you know help musicians to properly gauge or measure you know, how well or how bad their music is, right. you know, doing. So music log in the traditional system, which is, let's say, radio or TV, mm-hmm. is um, keeping those records. So if, for instance, um, any radio station is playing your song or TV station is, uh, they are playing your song or playing right. your music video, it's locked. Mm-hmm. So at least the very minimum, you know that, okay, my song was played at this radio station at this time, between this time and this time. And then what that happens is that it becomes data, just like you have the analytics and the DSPs right. to know that, okay, this is how well my music is, is, right. is, is stored right. Right. on whatever platform, mm-hmm. right? So when when you have that data, then you are able to say stuff like boldly able to say that, oh, this is the most um, requested song on radio, right. for instance. Right. When you are given awards for the most popular song, it shouldn't even be it debate. shouldn't be debatable. Exactly. Like this is the song. And also when it comes to royalty collection, because you have the log, you can now calculate properly what to pay the creator. So here in, in, in London, or I mean, yes, here in London or elsewhere, where they log music, right? When you receive the data sheets from your collection society, right? It's so detailed, you know? If there is any private online radio somewhere that played the song or like no, everything no. is locked, right? Mm-hmm. And you know how much... Um, revenue is generated per play on the various platforms so if for instance your music is played on um radio one you know that per play and if it's prime time this is how much you're making so when you look at the figures here you can actually calculate it a lot okay you are getting 200 pounds because you got two pounds here one pound here one pound here one pound here interesting so login is very important it's very important. If without a log, <laughs> you will call Papa and say, hey, Papa, today we'll go give you 20, 20 Ghana cities. And I'll take it like that. And I'll... you'll take it mm-hmm. because there's no log. But I must admit, there are a few people who are, um, a few companies, private individuals, uh, actually, who are private companies that, um, I think it's uh, in Ghana, there's one called uh, Good Music. It's run by a good friend of mine, um, uh, I think Kenneth, yeah, Kenneth Chell. He has this um, software. If your radio station, you have an online version, right? You are able to embed it on an online um, version. You have to submit the music in order for them to be able to obviously upload it on their system so that it can sure. recognize sure. the music. So I think it's an, it's an amazing piece of tech mm. um, that solves that problem of mm. login. This should be the radio station's responsibility in the first place. It shouldn't be our responsibility. You know, I mean, if you are playing music, yeah. you should log it. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Before you before a, a DJ comes on, on, on radio, they should be able to present their their playlists mm-hmm. um, for their show. Yeah. So you log it, and then this is the information that also sometimes goes to the collection societies. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah. Login is very, 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 very important. And so these are some of the things that we need to um, work on. And then obviously when it comes to the royalty system as well, um, you know, um, it's it's currently, it's in a very, 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 very terrible state in Ghana. 
um, I've heard, you know, the, the the amounts that people are receiving, people like Shatawale, and it's like, <laughs> it's shocking. It's shocking because they are not using proper data. Yeah. Right? They're not using proper data. So they're just giving out money just because money is coming in. Definitely, mm. you have to give somebody money. So they're sure. just giving people what is due them. You know, so... Um, that's one of the the, the 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 major challenges that we have in Ghana. So, it's important to create alternative um, streams, you know, for uh, creators, right? Um, be it merchandise or be it you know by way of you know whether shows or creating platforms where maybe the musicians can perhaps sell their content. Mm-hmm. Um, to their fans or to their core fans, even before maybe it hits the the main DSPs or whatever. Right. Different. It's, it's different ways to do it. But for me, the things are important just because, just so that for now, um, the musicians can at least make some money. Yeah. Right from the stuff that they are creating. So these are the things that I am personally looking into improving. Right. Ways to introduce different streams or platforms where the musicians can make money hmm. so without giving away too much um, or saying anything prematurely um yes for me that is where my focus is right now hmm. it's um the, the 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 issues we have in the country is not going, going to be fixed overnight it will take a while yeah um i have been doing music for over 15 years then within this period nothing has been done it's actually gotten worse so in the meantime, what are we doing for mm-hmm. the young creatives? Are we saying that we're also going to sit down and wait until yeah. the powers that be fix whatever issues there are? No, we also we 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 can create platforms for them to make money, right. even if it means providing funding for them to be able to, you know, uh, properly, you know, um, market their um, their music or whatever. That is yeah. what I am personally looking at, like at the moment. That's good. Exciting. So it 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 seems like we're not going to get another 0106 album uh, <laughs> because, because you're busy with all this stuff. So we're, we're going to move into the last segment of this, which um, I like to call overrated, underrated. So I'm just going to say a word or a name and you quickly, you know, say if it's overrated or underrated if you want to go into why it's great but no like no pressure it's a speed round so no no pressure at all okay you in Sorry. all right so the first word Kanye West underrated very controversial answer at this time of of life but great I like it um I mean I can listen I think Kai is a creative genius. Um, I think in recent time he's he's become one of the most misunderstood um, creatives. Um, the kind of stuff he's doing is just phenomenal, in my opinion. And throughout history, anyone who's dared to be crazy, <laughs> crazy, and just create and do things, and sometimes say some of the most outlandish stuff, you know, maybe they are just ahead of their time. You know, a lot of the stuff Kanye is saying, uh, in my opinion, maybe, who knows, five, ten years from now, we'll look back at the stuff and go like, wow, you know what? This mm-hmm. guy was onto something. You know, so I can't, I don't even want to talk about his repertoire. Like, I don't even want to get into his catalog. Sure. You know, sure. he, he, he's an amazing yeah. guy. And I feel like sometimes he doesn't get the credit he deserves in recent times. Mm-hmm. In recent times. I, I think there's a point where you can't say that Kanye is, people will argue that he's overrated. Right. But now, uh, I mean, what what do you think? I'm the guest. I, I, I mean, want, I'm I want the host. To, I want yes, but I still want to know. You think he's he's overrated? No, I think he's underrated. Like as an artist, I think he's underrated. But okay, yeah, that's that's mad. You are the host. I'm the host. So I mean, I'd have to answer yeah. my question. <laughs> yeah, I think I think he's definitely underrated. Yeah. Next one, Afrobeats. Underrated. Underrated. Okay. Yeah. Adenta. <laughs> Adenta is the most underrated city in the whole of Ghana. 
the whole of Ghana is the most underrated. Charlie, all right, all the, right. The, you don't talk too much. Listen, yeah, yeah. yeah, you put need to put some respect on Adenta. Respect on uh, Adenta. Yeah, all right, all right. That's what's up. Next one, NFTs or crypto or Web three point. Just that whole Web mm, Web three point zero. Yeah, I think I think it's definitely underrated. Um, I happen to be in that space and I see the potential, you know, um, from decentralized exchanges to the de- DeFi to DAOs. I think NFTs. Look, I think we need to get more people involved. Yeah, you know, we need to speak speak on it more. Try introduce more people onto these platforms because Charlie, decentralization is the way. Yeah, yeah. it's the way. Charlie, staying under these big corps and all these people just keep yeah. messing with our money. Yeah. With time, we take control. The people take control. So, all right. Let's see. All right. Let's see how it goes. But yeah, it's definitely down to uh, underrated. Okay. Next one is kids. What? Kids. Uh-huh. Kids. Kids. Oh, kids. <laughs> Kids can never be overrated. Never. <laughs> never. Why well, you feel differently? I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I don't blame yeah. you. So, so, so you're thinking underrated. Yeah. I mean, overrated. It can never be overrated, like in my opinion. Like, how can kids be overrated? Now you okay? No, hold on. For this particular, no. one, I want to know what. We're not think. going. We're not going anywhere. No, 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 that. no, no, nope. Papa, That's this one. I want to know what you think about this one. Nope. I mean, look, it's it's all it's all an opinion, right? So it's like, okay, um, you know, are they overrated? Are they underrated? You know, I think that I'll say slightly overrated. So I'm going to say slightly overrated. I think I I think How? kids are wonderful. I think they're wonderful. Give but like, me one reason, just one sometimes. reason why you would think that what? like that they are even slightly overrated. I I knew I knew this would trigger you, but I was like I let me get this over. No, I'm, I I really want to like yeah. I, look, why anyone would think right. kids are overrated? Yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I can think of. Okay, we just want because I know s- certain people who don't right. want to have sure. children or who don't want to have nothing to do with children. Right. Look, some of my closest friends, right? They swore that they don't want to have kids, right? Until they had kids, they were like, "Wow, yeah. you know." So yeah. for me, it's like it's a no-brainer. Like I know, sorry. it's on the way too. The last okay. one, last word. Talk to me. Talk last, to me. Last word. Mm-hmm. Jay so. Okay, so so overrated. <laughs> <laughs> they should be overrated. Uh, be overrated. I be overrated. I think highly underrated. I think people don't give you your flowers enough, but um I think that the time will come. So my answer so, to that <clears throat> is underrated. So here's the thing, right, Papa? Um now more than ever, like a lot of things make sense to me now. Right. Like what? It must it might sound like the normal thing to say, but um think about it. I'm here because I was rated. Hmm. Right. I I think back at you know all the different opportunities, all the people that I have worked with. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the potential there, yeah. It's always gonna be there. Right. We can always at any point in time we can sit down and comfortably or conveniently say that. Oh, if I had this and I had this and more people supported me, I would have done it. No, yeah. I don't believe in that. Like, I don't believe in that because that changes the, traje- the, the trajectory of everything. Right, sure. Every single thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We won't be having this conversation if Jesu was overrated. <laughs> sure. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I get it. So for me, it's really about understanding and, you know, yes, we have a role to play at at any point in time, you have a role to play. How much are you pushing? Um, how well are you marketing your stuff? In fact, word on the street is Jay, so it doesn't take the music seriously. So there are lots of people who are who really generally feel like if I had put in more, sure, I would have 
you know, done better. But guys, Charlie, the stuff I've achieved here, it'd be saying now people really know they think about her. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I have done well for myself. Yeah. yeah. The doors that's opened for me because of this music thing where I do. And, right. you know, look, I don't care about awards. I don't care about a lot of things that people would kill for. Yeah. I don't care about those things. For me, the little, little things where, you know, like a few people that I've, I've, I've talked to or I've met and, you know, certain conversations I've had with people and the impact. Look, let me tell you something, Papa. Yeah. I've never told this story before. Excuse I've never told this story before. But there was this kid here. I mean, he's not a kid now. He's married and everything. And I thank God, thank God, he made that decision. This boy was basically about to end his life. Mm. You know, he's someone who used to call me a lot back in the day. You know, I, I never met him. Mm. It was just a fan. Every time he'd be commenting under my stuff, like this guy, you know, but I never met him. He will randomly, you know, call me. Charlie, how be the family? Just, you know, and I always like I always picked up the well, not it's not every single time, but I would talk to him every chance I get. And this one time, you know, he he called me and he was he was in this very distraught state, and you know, I'm glad I picked up. <laughs> I'm glad I picked up a call. That's all I'll say. Hmm. I'm glad I picked up my call that day, hmm. spoke to him, and he listened. Hmm. Not even his mom could hmm. get through to him. Wow. Hmm. His mom was listening to the conversation. God bless her soul, because I think he called me a couple of years, I think two years later, that his mom had passed away. You know. Wow. So... For me, yeah, Papa, like, I think differently. <laughs> I know. You know, the yeah. things that people yeah. kill for and think that it's everything, mm. you know, oh, they so you fall off, oh, they so, uh, look, people, people need to, look, you know, in fact, I'm not going to say that. Do you, if you think going online and insulting people or, you know, dissing people or leaving negative comments, if that is what makes you sleep at night, <laughs> go on. But you need to understand this, right? Me, I can speak for myself. The things that give me fulfillment here, it can never be none of those things like fame and, you know, material things and nah. Yeah. Nah. Hmm. Like, I know the people my music has touched. Those who have been, you know... um, I mean, there's there's a reason why I don't swear in my music, why I stopped swearing in my music. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a reason why I choose certain topics. Like, there's there's a reason for all that. Yeah, you know. So for me, I think I'm in a great space. I know this question was supposed to be underrated or overrated, but um, anyone who's listening, any real human being who's listening to me, will understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Me, what I'm yeah. doing is bigger than like it's bigger than what um, the industry tries to like you know, tell you is mm. success or if you get a hundred lessons on your music, you're mm-hmm. a failure. Mm-hmm. Hey, hundred people, hundred human beings mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. have sat down, listened to your music. Right. And you are not paying attention to those hundred people. Yeah. You are worrying about the million people who have not listened to your music, mm-hmm. who probably don't even care that you exist. You know, they don't even know of your existence, maybe. Right. But the people who have taken their time to listen to your music, you're not right. paying attention to them. Mm. You know, and recently I was, I was even listening to this um, podcast. I think it was uh, Joe Budden's post- podcast. I've forgotten who the guest was. And he said something like, um, if let's say you, you, you make a post, right, you can have like 100 positive messages and then one negative one. Sure, yes. But you feel the need to, respond to that right. negative one right it's like it's almost instinctive 
the human brain is you know wired to yeah it's like yes, you want to in that way understand why is this person being negative why mm-hmm. But guess what? There are 99 other people who have commented positive stuff right. that you need to lend your attention to. Right. Right. You know, and I'm learning these things. In fact, I've learned these things and I have a different level of appreciation for what I create and my purpose and everything. So, yeah, man, like 100% pop, I think I'm in a great space. That's and awesome. every I'm, I'm here because of all the mistakes and all the good decisions that I made. Yeah. That's so, great. yeah. yeah, That's bro. great. That's great, bro. Uh, do you have any last word for our listeners? Uh, anything to share? Anything you want to say? Uh, all that stuff. Um, my message has always been the same, Papa. Um, if you're listening to me, just staying positive, yeah, it's like, it sounds simple, but um, it's everything. Right. It's everything. It's it's basically, what's the word? Is it? It encapsulates. Is that the word? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It captures everything, mm-hmm. right? If you want to make it, no, no matter what you're doing, right? Stay positive, right? Um, I will also add that you should, um, mentorship is very, very important. It's something that I always preach when I am asked, you know, if I have any last words, mentorship is important. It's important to find people who know the the space or they've traveled that space or terrain that you are trying to, you know, that journey that you're trying to embark on. It's Mm -hmm. good to have mentors who know that space well so they can share their knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. It just saves you a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, even though, their story or their background, it may not exactly be yours or the same situation you find yourself in. But those little, little, little gems, you know, they 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 save you a lot of trouble. Right. You know, so I would say mentorship is very, very important. And um, yeah, what's the last one? Maybe that should have been the first one. Always put God first. Mm. Put God first. If you put God first, the rest, it will come to you. That's what's up, bro. Bro, thanks again for your time. What is the best way for, for people to connect with you? To connect how? We Just can't like connect you if you talk about. Messages? <laughs> are, you, like, are you LinkedIn? <sighs> Instagram? What's, what's the best way? Email? My social. Um, I think the Best way to connect for me is social media and um, my Instagram. Great. Well, there's an email attached to my, to my Instagram, to my JSO Instagram, so you can send an email as well. Or just mention me on Twitter, Charlie. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So, cool. yeah, I think I think that's the best way to connect with me. Um, and my handles, JSO, Skillion, across all platforms. All right. Sounds yes, good. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sounds yes, sir. good. Charlie, that's about all we have time for much love to Jaso being on the show. Thanks um, for having me. I feel very, very, very special. You know, episode sure. one had to be me, Charlie. And I pray that this um this project that you've you've started, I, I pray that it, you know, continues to grow. Um that you, you know, God will grant you. I mean, one thing I always say that God will grant you great health mm. so that you can keep pursuing this thing. And um, Charlie, I'm always going to be there for you. You know that. I know Anything that. Anything you need, just hit me up and I I'll always it. try to do my best, you know. We appreciate it. We, that's That means a lot. And that's why you're the first guest, bro. So thanks again for being on the show. Um, so to our listeners, we've had Jay So. Um, our first guest on episode one, season one of A Sound yes, Conversation. Uh, I have been your host, Papa. First up, much love to you watching or listening for your time and support. Uh, you can follow me on all socials at P-A-A-P-A-V-E-R-S-A. Papa Versa. Papa Versa. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast. New episodes coming every month. So till next time, 
Take care of yourself and your loved ones. Grace and peace to you. Peace out.